This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. It's the week of Christmas in 2020. What holiday film best connects with this year? <laughs> Might be too happy. Released in summer of 1992, fa la 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 la. Batman Returns was Tim Burton's sequel to his record-breaking Batman in 1989. While folks were excited to see it, the reaction afterwards was something like this. People didn't know what to make of it. They were certainly expecting something dark, but this... Yikes. Toy companies, especially McDonald's Happy Meals, panicked because parents were so pissed off something so demented and unpleasant was being marketed to kids. Why can't we go back to more innocent times of Terminator, Robocop, and Alien Toys? You moron! Since then, people haven't really known what to make of this film. Naturally, it has its fans and its haters, but most people I talk to put it in the I don't want to think about it because I don't know what to think about it category. Does it make you stronger watching it? Does it make you weaker watching it? I don't know, it just clearly does... something. So naturally, I think this is the perfect film to look over this holiday season. Let's celebrate Christmas the most appropriate way I can think of. This is Batman Returns. We see Pee-wee's playhouse has changed since he entered the 1%, but his freaky occupants have not. For his wife gives birth to a bouncing baby abomination, which honestly is about as good as a Pee-wee birth can go in my opinion. <laughs> Thankfully, they had a baby cage ready. I'll assume that's an item the rich have. But he finishes off his calf food and they decide to give him up for adoption or bridge. That's, a, that's another option. Well, I'm in the Christmas spirit. Merry Christmas from Kenner. You know, this really should have been a Disney film. It would have gotten a G. He floats through the sewers and is intercepted by penguins. Yes, that will be the most normal part of the story. And we cut to years later where Gotham City is having their massive... Ish. Lighting of the tree. About to attend this event is Christopher Walken playing business mogul Max Shrek. Uh, named after the actor from Nosferatu, not a DreamWorks energy drink. And I gotta say in most films he brings 80, maybe 90% Walken to a role. But this flick he brings 100% Walken. Everything he says sounds like an impression of himself. That's not growth. That's a mild swelling. I could hand out more than just expensive baubles. Bruce. Shame on you. Selena. You on? Come on down. Yes. You could literally change the character's name to Christopher Walken and nobody would bat an eye. How industrious. He's proposing a new power plant that I think a three-year-old designed. So he can obtain, well... More power. Um, I have a suggestion. Michelle Pfeiffer plays Selena Kyle, a dorky secretary who may be a power plant specialist. Am I the only one driven nuts? We never hear her suggestion. I'm afraid we haven't properly housebroken, Ms. Kyle. Hey, fuck you, buddy! Dad, Mr. Mayor, it's time to go down and bring joy to the masses. Oh my god, we found the only other actor bringing more walk-in than walk-in to the role. Andrew Brynjarski, Zangi from the Street Fighter movie, because this film clearly wasn't weird enough, plays Max's son, Chip. I honestly have no idea why he's a character in this. You could cut him out and not miss a thing. I just love that he does an impression of Walken straight to his face throughout the entire movie. Dad, you buy that blurry business? Time to go down and bring joy to the masses. Dad, go! Save yourself! Dad, go! Walken, the whole film has a look like... What's with that voice? It sounds weird. Tim, tell him to stop being weird. While making a speech, the circus comes to town and attacks the crowd. I have to admit, I love that all it takes for the cops to call Batman is one of their cars being dented. What are you waiting for? The signal! Uh, sir, we have a SWAT team coming in. Look, for some reason we suck at fighting clowns! He's good at fighting clowns! Let him fight clowns! 
The signal is reflected into Wayne Manor Library, which looks cool, but what was the excuse he had for setting that up? Mr. Wayne, you want giant reflectors to shine the bat signal into your library, which you'll presumably be in all the time? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Okay. Batman arrives, and I guess this is as good a time as any to talk about the whole Batman killing thing. Some people have very strict rules about Batman, like he doesn't carry guns and he doesn't kill. Despite him doing both several times in the past. My personal take is, do whatever matches the version. Would Conroy or Bale kill people? No. With the exception of bullshit loopholes. I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. Real humanitarian. Would Keaton and Affleck? abso friggin lootly Affleck? Maybe going for a few too many gold stars in that department. Should he kill? No. Would he kill? Probably. I mean, people are on fire. You think this Batman's gonna be like, all right, better get out of the car, knock the guy out, get back in the car, and make sure everyone is safely subdued. No, that would have cost like five civilians. Light that bitch. Also, I'll bring up what nobody does. When Batman kills somebody in the Burton films, it's hilarious. <laughs> If you're not laughing at these, you clearly need this sign before watching. <laughs> One clown takes Selina hostage, thus Batman telepathically summons the proper tool. The Batman. Or <laughs> is it just Batman? Do I look like that Twilight fop to you? Hey Frank, you know what this alley needs? What? A face. Okay. Shrek is kidnapped and taken to an abandoned zoo. Can't imagine why this place didn't stay in business. It looks so welcoming. And he comes across the penguin played by Danny DeVito. I believe the word you're looking for is... I believe the majority of this film's problems are around this one character. I mean, Batman's still cool, Catwoman's still cool, even Walken impersonating Walken is still cool, but this character is written as an absolute monster, but is directed like we're supposed to have some sympathy for him. Poor DeVito does an amazing job trying to pull off both, but it's kind of like taking a disgusting villain like Baron Harkonnen from Dune and saying we're supposed to feel bad for him like Ramesses from Prince of Egypt. You gotta go for one or the other. Tragic irony or poetic justice, you tell me. We'll go more into that in a bit, but for now, he tells Shrek he wants to ascend into society, and if he doesn't lend him a hand, he'll lend him one. How's Fred Atkins, your old partner? He's good. <laughs> Max, remember me? I'm Fred's hand. I always like to assume that's not Fred's hand, and they just assumed he killed him, so they pulled a hand off another dead person. They just so happened to guess right. He doesn't even flinch when he shakes it as a joke. That's a face of a guy who's held a lot of dead body parts. Working right. <laughs> Back in the office, Selina comes across some incriminating evidence showing that Shrek wants to use the power plant to suck power from the city, not generate it. Again, I know it makes me a sick asshole, but this scene's hilarious. Huh? <laughs> huh? You know, for a second there, you really frightened me. <laughs> I feel like that's just how Christopher Walken would tell a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Honestly, I really underestimated the humor in this movie watching it again. As a kid, watching her be brought back to life by alley cats and have a mental breakdown was pretty fucked up, but as an adult, it's still fucked up, but it's really funny. <laughs> Stuffing the toys down the garbage disposal, spray painting her dollhouse, even the ad about winning the boss's affection from the company owned by the boss who tried to kill her. Then your boss will be asking you to stay after work for a candlelight staff meeting for two, exclusively at Shrek's department. I feel bad for her, but it's really friggin' hilarious. Pfeiffer, honestly like everyone, finds that perfect balance of tragedy, but also hamming it up. Look at those faces she makes. She plays crazy great, but you're also kind of giggling at it too. I also love how this raincoat is supposed to somehow cover her entire body, and I don't sew, but I think these thimbles are a lawsuit waiting to happen. I don't know about you, Miss Kitty, but I feel so much yummier. Just as Catwoman is on the rise, the Penguin is too, staging a rescue of the mayor's baby. You gotta love this convincing performance. No! It's the hideous Penguin Man! Here, take the baby, just don't hurt me, please. He didn't spend three weeks at Matthew Broderick's community theater for nothing. All I want in return is a chance to find my mom and dad. Mr. Wayne, something wrong. 
No. That was code for please help me with this tree. I'm like a million and you're literally Batman. Douche. At first, Bruce is taken by the Penguin story, but upon more research, he finds he may have a more dangerous background. Also, because of this movie, I know Vichy Swa is supposed to be cold. Cold? It's Vichy Swa, sir. It's supposed to be cold. It's supposed to be cold. It's supposed. He discovers the Penguin might have been involved with a bunch of child disappearances in the past. Missing children in several towns. Police have closed down. Red Triangle's fairgrounds. You hear that, kids? You think Batman saved all the children at the end, but there's God knows how many little bodies in the Penguin's backlog. Merry Christmas from Play-Doh. It looks like the Penguin is already up to his old trick, saying he wants the Hall of Records to find his parents, but uses it to look up all of Gotham's firstborn sons. Are you concerned about that strange, heroic Penguin person? I think he knows who his parents are. Sir, you don't have to do that voice in front of me. I know who you are. Douche. Penguin does eventually find his parents, continuing to win the people over. Penguin, for his parents, I'm fully at peace with myself and the world. He's like a frog that became a friend. Nah, he's more like a penguin. I have no joke, I just love how stupid that line is. Catwoman also makes some progress, testing out her fighting moves on a mugger. Thanks, I did. <gasps> I saw you first, give me your wallet. You make it so easy, don't you? Always waiting for some bad man to save you. Uh, hypocrite much? You really should try being dropped from a tall building. It set me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> Even after a nasty fall and a psychotic breakdown, she still shows up to her job. That's just a good work ethic. Selena, Selena. <laughs> That's my name, Maximilians. Don't wear it out or I'll make you buy me a new one. What I like is Bruce has clearly seen her before. He even slips up and says he remembers her. Yeah, we've met. Have we? I mistook me for somebody else. You mean mistook me? But it's not until she looks and acts completely bonkers that he's suddenly like, Say, you look like you wear black leather to cope too. I remember the time I forgot to wear my underpants to school and the name of the boy who noticed was Ricky Friedberg. He's dead now. Well, they say don't put your dick in crazy, but I don't sense any drama out of her. Women. Nothing surprises me, Chip. Except your late mother. Wait, mother's dead? I got a penguin to see. Speaking of which, Shrek surprises Penguin with his bright idea of having him run for mayor. Now you might be thinking who's gonna vote for a monstrous, sex-hungry maniac who abuses people. What am I talking about? He's overqualified. <laughs> Just look at how he handles people who make fun of him. My nose could be gushing blood. <laughs> Merry Christmas from Diet Coke. Shrek convinces him to be mayor as he can use his henchmen to drive the current mayor into a chaotic frenzy. Burn, baby, burn! Hashtag 2020. Hey parents, McDonald's here. We know you were upset with the Happy Meal toys we had for the new movie Batman Returns. Well, we're happy to announce we've updated our toys to be more authentic to the film you saw. It's the Batman Returns Toys Redux. My favorite is the penguin after he just bit someone's nose off. It's so bloody and disturbing I hope to never sleep tonight. My favorite is Catwoman after she went insane and got shot four times trying to seek vengeance. I hope I'm that mentally unstable when I grow up. My favorite is the circus train carrying lots of little boys like me to their watery graves. I'm terrified but I'm told to smile for the commercial so yay! Your kids will love them. And we're not just saying that because our founder is Batman. And if you're still unsatisfied, don't worry. The following two films will gladly sacrifice art so your little pipsqueaks can have something to play with while eating Chicken McNuggets. McDonald's. Yes, you can blame us for Batman and Robin. Congratulations, Doug Walker! You just saved Christmas! <laughs> by using DoorDash and showing support for your local restaurants. You've counted on restaurants, now they're counting on you! And while their dining rooms may be closed, they're still open for delivery with DoorDash. DoorDash is the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with the new contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the US, Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. 
delivery. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite local restaurant, and your food will be left at your door. DoorDash deliveries are now contactless to keep communities we operate in safe. And right now, our viewers can get $5 off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code NOSTALGIA. That's $5 off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NOSTALGIA. Don't forget that's the code NOSTALGIA for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. You like me? You really like me? I don't like you, but DoorDash does. That's your food right now. Go get it. Go get it. Go. 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 Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them. Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. As Penguin said, he unleashes his goons on the city to blow up stores, steal valuable goods, tap people's heads. Monsters! But thankfully, Batman was out doing some bat shopping. Maybe he was going to the bat store. Wait, that was gonna be a thing in this movie? Th they actually built that? Huh. Maybe they had a line of credit and they called it, I'm not digging up old wounds. I bet this effect will age great. Yeah. So <laughs> Seamless. Meanwhile, Catwoman tears apart one of Shrek's department stores and again, give Pfeiffer credit for learning how to use a whip and apparently doing all these stunts herself. Years later, she even found her old whip and showed off she still has the moves. Needs a little TLC. That shouldn't be turning me on. Maybe it should. Either way, it's turning me on. I didn't know Batman needed exciting rounding the corner music, but it sounds very nice. Piss off, Wilhelm. Me, me! He approaches the penguin, but their meetup is quickly interrupted. She's thinking, ah, oh, shit. Came across the only people who wouldn't be weirded out by any of this. They have themselves a little fight, and honestly, this is so silly, I can't help but love it. How could you? I'm a woman. I'm sorry, I... I... Uh! Oh, we'll see if I help you open a jar anytime soon! Who's the man behind the bed? That's not you. At first I found it weird that Batman would actually be attracted to this, but like the killing thing, just because he shouldn't doesn't mean he wouldn't. I mean, look at these two and tell me they wouldn't attract one another. She gets away, but not without leaving her mark. Alfred, bring me some antiseptic ointment, would you? Oh, sorry, sir. I can't understand you unless you whisper in the bat suit like you did before. Bite me, Joffrey. Penguin announces his candidacy for mayor in the most ewy way possible. Where a button? Let me just get it on that. Uh. Ew. And Catwoman makes her way to him, proposing that they team up to take out Batman. It's chilly in here. I'll warm you. Down, hey. Oswald. Yeah, calm down there, Quentin. Check it out. We're gonna disassemble his Batmobile and turn it into an H bomb on wheels. Kinda curious how he got the plans for that. Uh, are you sure you want to eBay these? He wouldn't help me with the tree, he spat out my soup, he does his bat voice at random, I'm done with the son of a bitch. Okay. I know plenty of people who'd be interested in this. Get a good price and I'll throw in some shark repellent. Catwoman eats his bird, which apparently she really did. I'd like to think I'm prompted. And they get the idea to frame him. Selena and Bruce go on a date and discuss their past relationships. Hey, girlfriend? No, had one, didn't work. See, Vicky thought... Vicky? Ice skater or stewardess? Oh, well, that's what she is now. I ruined her career after dumping me. The Ice Princess has been kidnapped. They're interrupted, though, when they discover Gotham's mascot, the Ice Princess, has been kidnapped by the Penguin. Can you confirm for us the reports we're hearing of Batman's suspected involvement in the abduction? This evidence is purely circumstantial. 
but just in case we're not running the bat signal. They both take off, which is great when you realize they're just gonna meet up again to fight each other. But what's even better is Bruce putting together why his usual excuse won't work. I thought I had to go out of town. Tell her there's a big business deal came up or something. I've just gotta go out of town on business for a few days. You lied to me about leaving town! No, you know what? Let her know that none is I'm gonna dumb be my girlfriend. Tell her I'm Batman. I don't care. I gotta go. A drawbridge opens up and he takes a bat suit off one of the bat hangers. Because Schumacher directed for a minute. And he tries to search for the Ice Princess during the tree relighting, which surprisingly wasn't cancelled due to a kidnapping. He locates her, but finds Catwoman is awaiting his arrival. Eat floor. Uh! High fiber. Okay, fine, with two minutes that Schumacher directed. The princess is dropped from a building, looking like Batman pushed her, and bats are released on the crowd. But look on the plus side. This. I wonder if Wonder Woman has this problem. Mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. Who decorates an antenna? <laughs> Jesus, no wonder he couldn't save the princess. He's been walking around with that stuffed up his ass the whole time. Let's consummate our fiendish union. Penguin celebrates their framing, but he proposes a little too much, and Catwoman swipes left. You lousy minx, and I don't think I like you anymore! Penguin hooks a helicopter onto her, but she breaks free. Is her suit made out of animantium? How many falls has she survived? And things are made worse when the Penguin's goons seize control of the Batmobile via remote control. Oh, yeah, how come the cops only show up when a Batman's driving? He eventually gets control back and transforms into a bat penis to escape. The next day, Penguin makes a speech to continue to win the people over. Did the mayor have a plan? No! He relied on a man! A Batman! I'm asking you to vote for a Birdman! But not that Birdman! That is also Batman! They fan service all the crybabies that bitched about Vicky Vale in the first one. Who let Vicky Vale into the Batcave? I'm sitting there working and I turn around, there she is. Oh, hi, Vic. Come on in. Just, he was confessing. She figured it out. How many millionaires can vanish out the window? Whatever. And he plays audio of the penguin cursing the people he recorded the previous night. I'll take care of the squealing, wretched, pinhead puppets of Gotham. Ah, uh, remember the days when that could ruin your career as a politician? I play this stinking city like a harp from hell. <laughs> um, fake news? Oh, that's all it took? All right, cool, yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, why is there always someone who brings lettuce and tomatoes to a speech? Why is there always someone who brings eggs and tomatoes to a speech? Because you're a cartoon, I don't know. He escapes back to his hideout where he continues his original plan, gathering all of Gotham's firstborn sons to drown them. And if you're wondering why Firstborn Sons, it's because in the original script, Shrek and Penguin were supposed to be brothers. Him being the abandoned Firstborn and Shrek being the prosperous Secondborn. Which would have been pretty interesting in my opinion, but it was cut, so the Firstborn thing is kind of random. And we will snatch them, carry them into the sewer, and toss them into a deep, dark, watery grave! Merry Christmas from the Batman Returns Gumball Dispenser! Bruce is given an invite to Shrek's Max Curé Ball. Yes, that's really what they call it, and yes, I am insanely jealous of that pun. As he fixes the Batmobile. May we RSVP in the resoundingly negative? Not interested. Although, Selena Kyle might be there. Mm, this is why Superman works alone. He sees Selena at the party behind Red Death. That's a nice touch. And they follow through on their kinda excuses. Listen, I'm sorry about yesterday, but I had a pretty big deal come through. Fall through action. Did he just make a joke about a woman falling to her death? Pretty big deal. Come through. Fall through action. Again, must be this sick. Everyone in the film is great, but Pfeiffer really does knock it out of the park with scenes like this, where literally in a head turn she goes from crying to laughing. I don't know anymore, Bruce. <laughs> You're crazy. They eventually put together their secret identities, but it's interrupted by the Penguin, who kidnaps Shrek again and reveals his evil plan. Right now, my troops are fanning out across town for your children! Yes! 
You hear that, Commissioner? I still feel like this is a Batman thing. But they have an incredibly slow-moving, brightly colored train. We didn't even stop the Joker when he announced where he was going to be. Let him fight the clowns! I'm Loopy! Batman does exactly that, and... I guess that's the end of that plot thread. Not entirely sure why that was in the movie at all. And he moves on to Plan B. Blow up Gotham with penguins. It's, uh, it's a weird film. The liberation of Gotham has begun! He whips out the bat ski boat, which really must have been exciting. I mean, how many times is a bat ski boat gonna be the answer? And they jam the penguin signal, turning them around. This film's full of anticlimaxes, isn't it? I would have paid good money to see Batman punch penguins. I can't even say that without laughing. He drops the penguin into the water because everybody has to fall in this movie, and he confronts Catwoman, who's confronting Shrek. Let's just take him to the police. What does it say? Split. Right up the center. I love you so much, I take off my mascara for you in between shots. I just couldn't live with myself. Selena chooses vengeance over love, leading to easily the best line in the movie. Selena. Selena Kyle. You're fired. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if she just left after that? Oh, fired. Oh. It's pretty clear Max has to die after Batman's revealed, and that's exactly what happens. When Selena whips out the taser from before and combines it with the electricity behind him. Bruce, shame on you. Oh, and the penguin can really hold his breath a long time. Hey, a cool trick of ice water. Merry Christmas from the Golden Book Collection! What were we thinking? This leads to, well, this scene. The penguins come out and give him a funeral march without opposable thumbs and bury him in the water. Uh, Arthur, is this a warm moment, or should we be disturbed? No shit. Danny Elfman's music is beautiful, but what tender scenes am I supposed to look back on to make me miss him? Let me get, get it on that. Nope, not that one. <laughs> uh -huh, not that one either. Ah! Oh, that's not a keeper. I want to find out who I am by finding my parents. Oh, okay, all right. Him wanting to belong to society. I can feel bad about that. Oh, wait, that was a ploy to find more kids to kill and he was faking all of this. I think he knows who his parents are. Um, bridge it is. I'll miss you? Mary, oh, just pretend we're Nightmare Before Christmas. Bruce swears he sees Selena on the way back, but it appears to only be her cat. Merry Christmas, Mr. Wayne. Goodwill toward men. And women. Yep, I, uh, I wanted to be equal. Yeah. The film ends with the bat signal being lit and Catwoman staring up at it, and fun fact, this was actually a last minute addition. Mostly because audiences wanted to slit the wrist after watching this movie. I think that was a good add-on. Batman Returns has a lot of flaws. Mostly, like I said, around the Penguin character. Which is strange, because the elements are there to make him sympathetic. They just needed to take out that every other second he was trying to kill kids thing that went nowhere. You could have had it where he just wanted to belong to society, but then the corruption of the human world doomed him. There was a Batman the Animated Series episode that kind of did that. But making him such a constant blood-hungry monster just made the message confusing, and not in a complicated way, just a very clumsy way. Aside from that, though, yes, it is silly and all over the place, but it's also visually stunning, well-acted, and hilariously demented. Some of these plot threads even pop up in Mask of the Phantasm. The idea of Batman being framed and losing someone you love to vengeance. Even flashing the signal at the end, despite I don't think Batman's name was ever officially cleared in either version. <laughs> if you just accepted as Tim Burton going all out, given a blank check, just doing whatever he wants, there is kind of a joy in how miserable it is. It's just so crazy and so brooding and so in your face unpleasant, you can't help but laugh at it. And I think that was the idea for the most part. I know it has its problems, but I can't help but love it for going all the way in on being so dark. If you're in the mood for a twisted Christmas film that's just barely a Christmas film by every definition, this is certainly the one to check out. And why wouldn't you be? It's been that kind of year. 
All sorts of misery and chaos resulting in a huge mess. Barely even feels like Christmas when you consider what everybody's been through. But in a strange way, that's almost kind of comforting. We've all gone through something together. Everybody has felt some form of sacrifice. Some have lost very little, others have lost a great deal. Even if you're one of the lucky ones who didn't get the worst of it, it's hard not to think of the people who did. But we get through it. That's what humanity is good at, getting through stuff, surviving, finding a way to press on. We always find a way. We work with it. So whatever path you find and whatever way you work with it, have the best holiday you can. Keep confident, stay strong, and be creative. Those are the things worth celebrating because those are the things that get us through so much. Merry Christmas to you all. We wish you nothing but the best. He's like a frog that became a friend. Nah, he's more like a big one. Hey, Doug Walker here, doing the charity shout out. You know, it's funny, I was looking for uh, charities to do around uh, Christmas time, and uh, one that kept popping up was uh, Make a Wish Foundation. Of course, we've done that charity before. Uh, like a doofus, it didn't connect to me that that clearly has a, a connection to Christmas, you know, making uh, dreams come true and, and giving just wonderful gifts and presents and stuff like that. So uh, I figure that's a really good one uh, to do. I, it, You've all heard of them. You know the wonderful things they do. You know that they, uh, you know, go to terminally ill children. They try to make their wish come true, whether it's uh, seeing a celebrity or take them to a place they've always wanted to go. They just do amazing work, and I... It, Everybody's heard of them. They know the incredible uh, stuff that they do. So please check them out. Uh, think about donating or spread the word. I mean, it's uh, they get a lot of attention this year and they deserve all of it and so much more. So definitely spread the word as much as you can or donate if you can. I know, I know a lot of people are struggling this holiday, but uh, even just spreading the word will go a long way. So thank you so much and take care.